All right, we are going to go over the general safety rules for the class. Um, this is just kind of the general overall stuff. We'll go over more rules that are more specific to each individual tool uh, later. But this is just kind of the general, the basics, just to be in the shop and be safe and uh, make sure we're all kind of on the same page. So here we go. Rule number one is safety glasses must be worn anytime you are working, watching someone else work, standing in line, or near tools that are being used. So basically, if you're in the shop, you need to have safety glasses on. So we'll go over to the shop, you'll grab a pair of safety glasses, give them a quick wipe down with your shirt. They do get sterilized in between classes, so um, they're not dirty or gross or anything, but you might want to wipe some dust off. Then you're just going to throw those on, you're going to leave them on, covering your eyes, until the end of class, when I yell clean up is when it is okay to take your safety glasses off. So make sure you got them on the whole class. Uh, eye injuries can be really serious. Uh, you've only got two eyeballs. You don't want to mess one of them up or both of them up. So make sure you leave your safety glasses on all the time. All right, this next, next picture is a little bit graphic. So if you don't want to look, just look away for a minute until we go to the next slide. So the nail out of a nail gun picture, uh, this person uh, was working and shot a nail out of a nail gun and it took a bad ricochet and wound up stuck in their eye. And every time I show that picture, there's always a kid or two that says, you know, but Madsen, even if that, even if that guy was wearing safety glasses, that wouldn't have stopped a nail out of a nail gun. But actually the amount of design that goes into <clears throat> the shape and the curves on those safety glasses actually usually do deflect stuff like that. And even if it didn't, even if it did crush the glasses, it's going to slow it down just that extra little millisecond of time that you would need for your brain to send off the reaction signal to turn your head, close your eye, do something like that to try to mitigate the damage. So super important that we wear safety glasses the only thing we use that's kind of like that is we do use a brad gun which is a really small nail and if that were to take a bad ricochet a bad bounce um, obviously bad things could happen so safety gla glasses on all the time second one we got remove all jewelry including watches when using power tools so anything on your fingers or wrists has to come off when you go to the shop especially if it's like a hard ring or bracelet. If it's those rubbery, stretchy things, those are gonna break when they get snagged on something and you're probably gonna be okay. But if it's something that wouldn't break, then it's gotta come off because that's gonna rip and pull and snag, okay? All right, graphic picture alert. Don't look if you don't want to. So this picture, there's a ring in this circle. This person was working and they slipped and fell and went to catch themselves. And that ring snagged and yanked the meat off of their finger, which is not good. So um, just wanna always make sure that anything that could get snagged on our fingers or wrists, we take off um, to avoid bad accidents. This is why the silicone wedding ring has become so popular because if that thing gets snagged it's just going to break and everything's going to be cool but uh, if it's a hard metal ring or watch or bracelet those things aren't going to give and they're going to dig into your skin and it's going to be a bad deal so we always take that stuff off number three is tie long hair back and roll up or remove loose clothing so um Uh, long hair, shoulder length hair needs to be tied back in a ponytail every day. Every time when we go over to the shop, it's got to stay tied back throughout the class period. Uh, and then loose clothing, so loose baggy clothing. If you got loose baggy hoodie on, you need to pop your sleeves up to at least your elbows. That's kind of tricky right now because sometimes in the shop it gets really cold, but still got to do that. If you have hoodie strings, those need to be tucked inside your collar. And if you have a zip up jacket, that needs to either be zipped or you got to take it off. Okay, so this little clip here is a news story uh, of a girl who was working in shop class 
she leaned in a little bit too far on the drill press. Uh, her hair touched the drill bit while it was spinning and ripped a bunch of her hair out. So that's just kind of the worst case scenario of what can happen uh, when we don't have our hair tied back and we have loose or baggy clothes. Uh, I've never had anything that bad happen with hair. I did have a girl a while back running a wood burner. She was doing some engraving and her, her, it was, her hair was in a ponytail, but it had come in front of her shoulders and she burned a big clump of her hair off. So we just always want to keep clear of anything that's loose and dangly and kind of hanging out that can get caught on, on the machines because that would be bad. Number four is keep the floor picked up. Don't have scraps, trash laying around. We always want to try to avoid trip hazards because if we trip in the shop and our hands go out to catch us, um, there's, it's likely, it is, it's possible at least that our hands go out and touch something that's sharp or pointy and we don't want that to happen. <clears throat> so try to keep the floor clear of trip hazards. Number five is let me know if anything just looks unsafe as far as tools. So remember, looks weird, smells weird, sound we sounds weird. So looks weird, you know, you got a machine or a tool starting to show a lot of wear. Maybe it's getting really dull. Maybe it's got a chip out of it. You want to tell me about those things. Smells weird usually means it smells like hot, which would mean it needs a belt replaced or it needs oil or grease or something's not quite right. And then sounds weird usually means it's squeaking or squealing. Um, Again, usually something needs oil or grease or something to, something's not right. So let me know about those things. Number six is report any and all injuries. Uh, you will never get in trouble for getting hurt. Sometimes I feel like kids don't tell me about an injury because they think, you know, they're, they're going to be in trouble because they were do, doing something. Um, don't, don't feel like that. You always need to let me know, especially if there's blood, even if it's just a little bit, a little cut or something. If you get a cut on your finger and then you touch a tool and then another kid touches that same tool, that could be, that could be a big deal. So uh, we need to take care of those things. Number seven is carry sharp tools with the cutting edge down and away from others. So if you go over to the tool wall and you got to grab a handsaw or a wood chisel or something sharp like that, and then you're walking back to your table. Uh, you know, if you bump into somebody or you trip and fall towards somebody, it's just really important that the sharp edge is down so that, so that nothing, nothing bad happens to them or to you. Number eight is stay alert. Focus on the task at hand and not anything else in the room. Don't talk to others while you are using the equipment and others should not talk to you while you are using the equipment. So if I'm running a bandsaw, you don't get to talk to me. If you're running a bandsaw, I don't get to talk to you. Okay, obviously the one exception to that would be if I'm running the bandsaw and you see me about to do something wrong and I'm gonna hurt myself, then of course you can say something. But as a general rule of thumb, when people are using the tools, we don't, we don't talk to them. We don't want to distract them. We want them to be able to stay super focused on what's going on. <clears throat> Number nine is close the vice handles so they're not sticking into the aisle. And don't over tighten them. So I want to go just until this board touches this board, but I don't want to crank it tight because that messes up the vices. And then the vice handle, that's this thing. I always want it going up and down. <clears throat> if it's going side to side, that's going to make it stick out of the aisle and it's going to become a trip hazard. Okay, so we always want to close them till this board touches this board, not crank them tight, and have the handle going north-south. So how it is in the picture here would be wrong. We always want that handle going up and down so it's not sticking out into the aisle. <coughs> Number 10 is don't ever blow sawdust. When you're cleaning up, you don't want to blow the sawdust to clear it out. Okay, you want to always swipe the sawdust with your hand onto the floor or into a dustpan, preferably into a dustpan to help with cleanup at the end of class. But you don't ever want to blow it in the air. If you blow it in the air, it can get, we all breathe it and it gets in our lungs and we don't want that. <coughs> or it gets in your eyes and that can be a big deal also. And that's even with your safety glasses on. Obviously the sawdust is so fine that it just kind of floats in the air 
and it can get behind your saw your um, safety glasses so you always want to just swipe the sawdust off with your hand I don't ever want to see anyone blowing the sawdust off and then the last one is use common sense if you're not sure about something you should always ask um, it takes far less time and energy to just answer a question than it does to you know for you and I to spend a couple days trying to fix your mess up okay so if you're not sure you should always ask and I can show you this video in class uh, it's just a girl that was in a shop class and had a bad accident because um, she just got a little bit lost her focus a little bit so that's the safety rules um, we always want to make sure we're, we're remembering all those there's some more safety rules that'll come as we do the shop walkthrough and talk about tools or rules specific to each tool but that's kind of the general um, safety there is a general safety test for you to take over these notes